Okay. Well, we've got a really hot, dry, windy day. It's going to be at 30, 36 today, basically. And, um, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'll have these boxes here, but, you know, I'm trying to do the, um, you know, keep them, these big boxes cool because they've got near like three. So I'm loading up the surface there, as you can probably see, with um, water. And, I, you know, you can do something like that as well, but that's not going to help much when it's on a slope. But um, they're all seals. I don't know how long these are going to survive. I noticed one of the things in here, um, in this one here, particularly towards the corner, there was one that sort of looked a bit different, and I sort of, uh, I, I was bugging me what it might have been in those close-up photographs down there. I think it's a Drosser Intermedia. So, it's one of the nine that seems to have come through. Yeah, been watering these things, but... Uh, I think I'm going to have to be watering them, watering them twice a day or something, but um, <laughs> this thing here, it's sort of surviving, but I've got to keep it wet, because the stuff is stuck to the leaf, but you have to keep it wet sort of thing, so, uh, oh, I don't know, more work, more work, more work, and I'll set up a few more of these uh, over the next few days, and we'll see how we go, so, um, yeah. I don't know. Something seems to be nibbling the leaves of these things down here. Seems to be going quite well now. That rhubarb's all right. This one's struggling a bit because the soil just keeps drying out. Got another one in here that's going too well. Uh, it's reasonable. So, um, yeah. <laughs> more work, more work, more work. Oh, that's one I haven't done. Three. Oh, and this one here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, well that's about, um, yeah, we, I can grow some nice weeds. Look at the, the thickness of the stem on this thing. You can imagine you have a, and how tough it is. It's like, almost like a Drosera gigantia stem. They weren't quite as thick as that, but you know, up to a nice big fat pencil or more, you know, a, a felt pen, you know, one of those sort of felt pen that was slightly thicker than a, the normal HB sort of size thickness of a pencil, you know, those sort of hexagonal HB sort of things. Um, the next thing up from that was like, you know, your, your, you know, your felt tip pen things. Do I have any? I don't know. Let's see. Do I have one? No, not that quite. Uh, do I have a... I think I thought I had one round somewhere, a coloured one. Uh, no, oh well maybe in another video. I mean even this was slightly a bit too thick. Um, so reasonable thickness they were, you know? And as I said, you used to stub your toe in a Wellington boot. I don't know what it was, the way they sort of arranged themselves. Every every season, every time you were at the swamp, some part of the day you'd you run into them. I don't know how it, whether, whether they forced you to go a certain way and then you got you got caught on one. But you used to stub your toe on it. In why your toe was in Wellington boots, you know, gum boots, galoshes, what do you want to call them? And it would hurt, you know. They they were so solidly growing in the ground. You know what I mean? They were. You know, and if you'd done your, your book reading, you were. Um, what the heck happened there? Did you hear that and see that? Oh, actually, it's just falling down. It just it slipped off but um yeah if you've done your work and you've done your reading you know cornus bulbous and tubus plants you know they go down at least two meters onto a, like a, a um a clay sandy zone interface or thing you know and then of course it's known as a real fight a plant likes to be slightly submerged for a good proportion of the year sort of thing you know so it's a real swamp plant you know and yet it's also the most robust it's probably not the tallest and well it's the most robust sun dew in the world sort of thing and you've got to think well why does it grow here in australia and why is it almost like a tree you know so you basically got yourself a small carnivorous tree and i said I, I when i was there they used to come up to my shoulder level sort of thing you know uh, as, as a young nine you know nine ten eleven twelve sort of yeah you know yeah, year old child sort of thing so you know it was a substantial small Christmas tree sort of thing and you know as I said very sturdy in the ground and um, 
I just can't see photographs online like that, whether people just aren't going out to the same sites, whether the same sites aren't there anymore. And of course, what the question is, what was so special about these sites then that aren't, ex aren't in existence anymore? And or is it well, why aren't people taking you out to the, uh, the if, if they do do still exist? And why are they showing you all this sort of cra uh, granite apron sort of crap? You know, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, some of the plants seem to be more colourful out there, but you know they don't seem to be uh, as tall or as robust as the ones I knew at Kensington Swamp. So you know, it's just um, I'm growing on deep sand, of course. I think that's the important thing: growing on deep sand. You know, so uh, anyway. I just thought I'd give you this sort of, you know, fill-in sort of thing, but um, I'll have to check in the box if anything's been roasted, you know. I'm all a bit afraid these things are going to fry in there, but, you know, I suppose if the algae stays green, it's okay. I don't know if that's a rule, but we'll have to see. But I reckon I'm going to be moving them fairly shortly, probably 